The flower's richness of color, beauty of form, and sweet odor, qualities so pleasing to our senses, all have a role to play in the plant's efforts to reproduce and multiply. From the moment of their unfolding, the blossoms prepare to fulfill their part, to mate with others of their kind, to produce fruit and seed. In plants, the union between male and female is consummated in the flower. The female organ is the pistil. The male organs are the stamens on whose tips the pollen, a granular powder, is produced. When some of this pollen reaches the pistils of flowers of the same species, fertilization takes place. The wind carries the pollen for grasses and many trees. The flowers of the maple hang their stamens far out to take advantage of even the gentlest breeze and the willow tries to increase its chances of mating by dispersing huge quantities of pollen. Most plants, however, depend on insects to carry their pollen. Of all the pollinating insects, bees serve the flowers best. They are well suited for this task. Their abdomens are thickly covered with fine hairs to which the grains of pollen cling. And so as the bee moves from bloom to bloom, she transfers pollen from some of the stamens to waiting pistils of other blossoms of the same kind. It's no special problem to her if the flowers are hidden or hard to reach. She can fly in tiny spaces, backwards, forwards, or hover. But her labors are not for the flower's sake alone. She searches for nectar, a treasure secreted within the blooms, which along with pollen is her chief source of food. The bees receive their nourishment from flowers, and in return, the flower's cycle of life is fulfilled by the pollinating bees. In the orchard, there are millions of blossoms, yet each one must be individually pollinated by a bee before it can become an apple. And while the blossoms last, the bees will gather a rich harvest. Inside the hive, 60,000 bees live in a highly organized society. Most of these are female worker bees. There are only a few hundred drones, the male bees who never do any work. One of them mates with the queen and afterwards dies. Later on in the autumn, all the other drones will be driven out of the hive and mercilessly killed by the workers. At the very center of the hive is the nursery, domain of the queen. She is constantly surrounded by a retinue of workers who feed her and supply all her needs. Except in winter, she never stops laying eggs. In early summer, she may produce 1,500 eggs a day. During her two or three years of life, she will lay more than half a million eggs. The egg deposited at the bottom of a cell hatches into a larva in about three days. In this hive, there are almost 10,000 larvae. Each one has to be fed every few minutes. And so the workers who tend the nursery seldom get a chance to rest. In about five or six days, the larvae enter the pupil stage. In another 12 days, 
they become young bees and try to struggle out of their cells. In this part of the nursery, each newborn bee is destined to be a worker. Though she is a female, she will have no reproductive power. That is solely the function of the queen. At her birth, the young bee already contains the pattern of her life's work, and in a few hours, she is ready to begin her labors. One of her duties is tending the queen cells. The larvae inside are fed a special diet to make them grow larger than the others. One of these will emerge to replace the existing queen. The others will be destroyed. A few days later, the worker is building cells for the storage of honey using wax secreted from her own body. She fashions these cells in the same precise six-sided form as all the other cells in the hive. She has known this skill from the moment of her birth. Cleaning up the cells, removing the bodies of exhausted sister workers, and beating her wings to provide ventilation are some of the tasks within the hive which occupy the first half of the worker's life. When she is about three weeks old, the pattern of her life is changed. The time has come for her to leave these accustomed surroundings and enter a new world of sunlight, color, and fragrant blossoms. Returning to the hive with her cargo of honey, the field bee transfers it to another worker who will carry it to the honey storage cells. The nectar which the bee sucks from the flower passes into a special stomach where the process of transformation into honey is begun. She uses some of it to provide energy for her own work. She is perfectly designed for her many specialized functions. On her head, are two great compound eyes, each made up of 6,000 tiny separate elements. Her mouth is in the shape of a long tube for sucking up nectar, and her hind legs are equipped with baskets for carrying the pollen. Though she was born only six weeks ago, the worker is nearing the end of her life, worn out by her unceasing labors in the service of the hive. She is active until her very last day, but eventually her body falls somewhere in the orchard, as lifeless as the petals at the end of blossom time. But life continues for the other bees in the hive, and now that the blossoms have gone, another source of food must be quickly found or they will perish. Nearby, a few wild plants are sheltered by a rail fence, but on this farm, most of the wild plants have been plowed up along the fence rows, and the rest have been methodically cut and burned. Scouts range more than a mile away, urgently seeking a supply of nectar and pollen large enough to satisfy the needs of the colony. One of the scouts finds a field of red clover. It's not far from the hive and will provide a good source of food. She hurries back to the hive to tell the other bees of her discovery. By performing a kind of dance, she communicates to them the direction and distance of the field from the hive. And by giving each one a taste of the nectar, 
She even tells them what kind of flowers they can expect to find. Soon, hundreds of workers are on their way to gather this rich harvest. And so the colony is sustained by the flower's abundance. And as spring passes into summer, the bees continue their life of service to the flowers. <laughs> 